you see now is an illusion. Hey everybody and welcome back. After a short break, we're going full steam ahead with new tutorials and workshops, so stay tuned. The first thing that we're going to be looking at today is the fire from the amazing short film Orion, directed by Ash Torp and produced by Hydra Studios. We're going to be looking into the workflows that Hydra used to create this cinematic, how to combine Solaris, how to use Axiom, and wrap it all up into a nice, awesome cinematic trailer. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome to the first section of the six part series. In this first part, we're going to take a look at how did Hydra set up their USD slash Solaris pipeline for importing characters and other assets. Uh, this part is more for people that are already familiar with Solaris. In the second part, I'm going to explain how to use the layer break setup and how to properly save USD files. In part number three, I'm going to explain some basic Solaris workflows. So watch this first if you're not familiar with Solaris before you watch the first two sections. In part four, we're gonna finally take a look at some Axiom fire setups. Then I'll explain how to use geolites and how to illuminate your scene or your characters using simulations such as fire or explosions. And in part six, we're gonna finish off with some more fire simulations and some smoke sims and then package and finish everything off. I hope that all sounds good to you. So let's start with the first section. Yeah, we're going to go through a detailed overview of how Hydra did the scene, how they did the layout, how they made the fire simulations and how they imported the characters and everything. Let's take a look at how to import our characters. All right, so we have our Orion character here in his bloody red jumpsuit, looking very creepy indeed. Uh, let's take a look at how this scene was set up. So we have our structure set up here, uh, creating our initial primitives that populate our hierarchy here. That's quite important to uh, stay neat and tidy. Uh, the way you can add stuff is by just typing more of them and you will populate more of them. Uh, super simple, super easy. They're all set to in assembly uh, and their primitive type is in is uh, an X form. You can obviously change this, but the assembly is kind of the, the way I look at it is kind of the, the top. This is kind of the, um, well, actually I can quickly show you and give you a quick refresher on this. So we have assembly group component, subcomponent. Subcomponent would be a door pivot. Component might be a door. Group could be a, a door, the whole doorway. And then the assembly would be um, or this could be like a room and the assembly could be the whole house, right? Uh, an example here on characters, we have our model. Under model, we have characters. Under characters, we have our lady. The lady can have skin and purse, which are components, or uh, purse could be a subcomponent as well. So it's quite organic. Depends on how you work. It depends on the workflow that and the pipeline that your studio has. Uh, and so on. Uh, this can be quite organic. It's good to do this. Uh, it's going to make your life a bit easier. If you're working alone, you can kind of disregard this in a way a bit. You can be a bit messy. Uh, I'll, I'll, and I'll show you later. Uh, but it's good to stay consistent. Then you have your primitive types. You know, uh, let's say my mesh is a sphere or is it a cube or your uh, mesh or uh, my primitive can be a light, what type of a light it is. 
you know, is my primitive a volume and so on. And then another example here, um, these are called leaf primitives and these are kind of the ones that are at the end. So this would be leaf, twig, branch, uh, branch one, two, three would be under a uh, trunk and the trunk, uh, the roots are kind of the main, uh, the main assembly, right? So in this case, they're all set to X forms and uh, primitives set to cubes, but you could set them as assembly group component in this case, right? So this would be assembly group component subcomponents. Um, yeah, just a quick uh, reminder on how that works and the, uh, the workflow. So we're back here in our scene. We're going to bring in our character and the character was brought in as an USD, which means that it actually the all the materials in this case, um, the material creation and assignment was done in a different scene by a different artist. And then he exports that file as a USD and we bring it in uh, to as a reference here into our scene. So uh, the other artist would be, you know, a character artist or a shading uh, artist. And then this, this, all of this here are uh, effects. And we bring all the effects together uh, with some lights. And this would be kind of our uh, scene assembly here with characters, effects, uh, lights. And, you know, this is kind of our, completes our layout. I will not be showing how to do the shaders and stuff, unfortunately, because somebody else uh, did them in a different scene. So uh, maybe a tutorial on that might be coming later um, if you guys are interested. But for now, we're just going to cover the assembly and the scene assembly type of things. So, all right, let's see. Our primitive path here is going to define how our hierarchy here looks like. So before you saw, I, I uh, removed a few things, but we can say test uh, and then uh, legs, and that will go under char, char Orion, Orion, char Orion, test, legs, and this will still work because uh, uh, everything was properly assigned before on our U on the USD stage, but you can see this is how we start then changing the hierarchy. It's with this primitive path. In this case, we just want to bring in uh, it like this because it makes sense. So our char in this uh, example is a component and this is the um, the assembly. So we're bringing things in with the reference like, the, like so, literally just uh, selecting our USD and then uh, we can also, because we're bringing it, we can bring things in into Solaris in a few different ways. Reference has a bit more, is a bit more specific. We can also bring it in with a uh, sublayer, but reference will allow us to sp specify which primitive do we want to bring in. So in this case, you can see we just want to bring in Char Orion. So th this is going to bring in the whole character. We could though specifically say just bring in uh just the eyes and here we go we have, we have where are they we just have the eyes now so when we are exporting our usd it is important how do we layer this uh because if we don't do it properly it might come in just as one uh, geometry but in this case it was exported properly so we do have the option to bring in different uh, sections of our character which means if we do this and bring in our head now we have our head and we can do a sub layer and bring in our sub layer this this and merge it now it's not gonna work and this is where um <laughs> this is where things can get interesting interesting uh it's, it doesn't work because our names are the same here you can see when we're bringing in our primitive path it's the same primitive path even though we're selecting a different component of it so what we have to do is change this uh, let's say this would be char, um, and we would say head. Otherwise, if it's not named, you can see this is still named the same, uh, which is not the best. We could even uh, change this to just head, right? 
uh, which would make a bit more sense. Uh, but you can see if something is named the same way, it it's going to think it's the same thing. Actually, it's uh, another important part in this would be a... So if we sublayer uh, just the inputs, we have this position, sublayer position, which is going to spec uh, specify which primitive is strongest. So now, now it's going to work. Okay, so if I back up just a bit, uh, it's going to work now. But if this was still named the same, this is not going to work. And if you say weak, weaker position, so in this case, the head had a weaker position uh, and it brought in just the head. Again, this will be all explained later uh, here with simple spheres uh, and how it works. Uh, but just so you know, for now, I don't want to... A quick sidetrack, if you will. All right, where was I? We bring in our freaking character <laughs> and uh, we specify the whole character. So this is how you bring in your characters with a reference. Hopefully we're going to get our character back with proper materi materials now. Great. Love it. Hello there. If this video is of any value to you so far, please consider sharing it to, to the universe. It really helps us a lot and we're going to make more content like this in the future. So if you like Axiom and you like Houdini and you want to see more content like this in the future, it's going to help us a lot. Cheers. Back to the video. Now we're going to do a layer break. Uh, layer breaks. Layer breaks. Uh, do you know these colors that happen around our nodes are there for a reason and they kind of they showcase different layers that we can then later export so layers are showcased like this so you can see we have three different layers here if i go up we're going to lose one if i go up again we're going to lose this one so each time we do a layer break here it's going to create uh, a root layer so that's kind of what that is so we're going to do a layer break uh, layer break so we create a layer this is again important when you're working in a studio quite a lot uh, to uh, keep everything organized so we do a layer break and we're going to bring in our animation and we're going to bring it in under char char orion again and what that will do if you remember before when we were bringing in things it just replaced it so that's going to do it's going to do the same thing that our char Orion geometry is going to get replaced. Not the materials though, just the char Orion. And because uh, our materials were proper, properly named and the, the character is named the same, the materials are still going to be applied. If we only bring in uh, this separately, so I'm bringing in, this is a just a copy of this reference, and it's not in our hierarchy. You can see it doesn't have the materials. So it's... it's uh, it's not shaded, but because we brought in the materials here from before, they're going to be applied. Uh, the character has a lot of polys, so it takes some time to initialize it. All right, so we are, we are here. So we can also edit our materials after the fact, uh, which is great. So we have our materials here. We can put down a edit uh, material network, plug it in here, and we can say the suit material just plug it here load it and again because this is usd it's going to load the whole material in case if you want to change anything after which is amazing what you can also do let's say we are here on the suit uh, we can say right click edit primitive and i don't know which one it is i think it's this one so it's going to bring in our edit material properties we can also select it here. Uh, so it's, I think it's this one. Yeah. So you bring it here and now you can say, oh, actually the base, you know, we want it to be something completely different. Uh, that's how you could edit this. Very cool. Very handy. Now we come to our configure layer, which is where uh, our USD asset is going to get saved. Uh, this is important to do it here uh, after the layer break. And you can see now, before we had this, the safe control 
uh, the save path was implicit, which means that if we save it as under the USD ROP, uh, flatten implicit layers, implicit layer, it's going to flatten it and it's going to create its own. Uh, actually, it's going to give us an error as well. And we can say error saving layers with implicit paths. We can turn this off and it's going to be fine. And then um, this ROP will create this safe path for us, uh, which is not the best. What we have to do is put this and then create a path so it's not uh, implicit anymore, but it's, it's explicit. So it's going to be saved here. And this path will usually be uh, the same path. So we would then save our USD here as well, right? I will show all this here on the side later. So now we have this, we combine them. Uh, and this is going to be uh, replaced again, like we saw before here. That's why I kind of wanted to give you a quick example how sublayers work, because once we do it here, it's also going to be uh, this. This will take precedence now. And we can see we have the animated Orion um, with the proper materials. And I know, I know it's, it can become a bit um, overwhelming, even with these uh, small examples here. Then we bring in our swords, just referencing them. They're here. So again, they don't have any animation. So we do the same thing. We do the layer break. We reference in the animation, the animated ones, uh, configure uh, their layers. And oops, I changed something, didn't I? Yep. And configure, bring them back in. So now we have our Orion. But now he has swords. Super cool bloody swords and then the same for the cameras uh we do a layer break and now hydra they have their own proprietary tools and uh, nodes i cannot for obvious reasons be sharing this one um but i can show you how it's done so uh, they have a scene import cameras where they're import you can you can create your cameras in you know in the uh obj context and then scene import them uh, they did a bunch of things here and then reference it back in so it's still gonna it's gonna come under camera slash shot uh then here's your camera right and then that's how you bring your cameras in and then there was some editing done to the camera and then configuring that layer as the camera layer and then you sub -layer it and that's pretty much the whole setup for the character i hope it wasn't too confusing let's quickly check how layers and usd um, works in this example now so maybe that's going to bring in some clarity all right <laughs>